I'm going to be talking to Dr. Christina Hoika, who's an associate professor of sustainable energy economics at York University. And she co-authored a study titled Post-COVID-19 Indigenous Economic Recovery, Reconciliation in the Energy Transition with Katerina Savick. And uh, you can see Katerina's interview also on our YouTube channel and on Energy Student Resources. So welcome to the interview, Christina. Thanks for having me today. Well, this is a very interesting topic, and we're talking about Indigenous communities and renewable energy. So why don't we start with an overview of your sort of your take on the paper that you co-authored? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been working for several years researching broadly how renewable energy transitions can happen and low carbon energy transitions can happen. And what really interests me are a few things. One is that there's wide agreement that in order to mitigate climate change, we need to transition to predominantly renewable energy. Uh, we know that according to modeling in Canada, we could transition to 100% renewable energy based on current technology. Uh, the International Energy Agency has projected that if we transition to at least 63% renewable energy, we could address the sustainable development goals. So, you know, renewable energy, even if it's not 100%, we know that we need to shift to predominantly renewable energy sources in order to mitigate climate change, that this is a really important option. Um, but a big part of that is that we need to have social acceptance is one way of looking at it. Um, and social acceptance we know is improved when you have local communities participating in the process and the governance and the benefits. So having you know, local community participation is a really important aspect of that. And um, another really important aspect of that is, um, is that this also provides uh, a big change economically in terms of communities can receive the benefits, including economic be benefits, and this can become a revenue stream. Uh, it can also become a way of uh, improving local energy security and reliability. So renewables have a whole bunch of benefits broadly to society. Uh, but it's also really, really important to engage communities. And so this paper is looking at the particular relationship between Indigenous communities and renewables. And what's really particular about their um, relationship is that uh, Indigenous communities have important relationships to the land, either through treaties or through uh, their relationship to traditional territories, which is outlined through the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. So we looked at specifically how Indigenous Economic Development Corporations are engaging in renewable energy as a, um, as a form of reconciliation and self-determination and also environmental action. Now, uh, one way of looking at uh, solar and wind, so renewables, is as distributed energy Mm -hmm. And it's and it's almost a, a democratization of energy because instead of a central power generation and distribution se system, you now have communities and regions can generate and distribute their own power, uh, not on the grid or perhaps off or partially off the grid. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. seems to have to me uh, to have a lot of uh, relevance to the you know I think approximately 600 uh, First Nations across Canada who are often in remote areas. And so this would uh, seems to me to be a big driver of economic development job creation for them. Is that consistent with the way the economic development corporations that you interviewed, is that the way they saw it? Yeah, so in our study, we focus specifically on grid connected communities uh, because the um, motivations for renewable energy is a little bit different than remote communities. Um, and yes, uh, the economic development corporations that we surveyed and interviewed were already involved in renewable energy projects, and they uh, all saw renewables as a very important opportunity uh, for a variety of things to have uh, control over the land, reconnection to the land, and also uh, for economic development opportunities and self-determination. Um, so there were, they see a lot of benefits in the relationships. Um, in producing renewable energy. 
Well, here's a question for you then, and I'm not sure that your paper addressed it, and maybe you can't you you can't answer it, but I I'm curious, and that is uh, in as a rule, uh, yeah. renewable energy is integrated more easily into a grid when there is some kind of re-regulated market structure, like Alberta has one, Ontario has kind of a you know, but but most of the other provinces don't. They're vertically integrated monopolies like BC Hydro, Manitoba Hydro, Quebec Hydro. Did that come up in discussions about whether there needs to be uh, regulatory change and, and reform in order to facilitate uh, indigenous renewable energy investment? Absolutely. So um, regulation and policy and institutional structure are very important in terms of both uh, renewable energy rollout and also in terms of community ownership of renewables. Um, it doesn't necessarily matter as much whether or not it's vertically integrated or not. So BC Hydro, BC had a very successful renewable energy procurement program and a lot of Indigenous uh, community organizations were involved in that. Um, whereas Ontario, which has a hybrid structure, they also had quite a bit of success. Um, but the issue really is whether or not the policies uh, target communities um, and uh, in the case of, for example, Indigenous communities, um, if they're given uh, beneficial treatment in terms of, for example, the Aboriginal price adder was really successful in gaining equity ownership for some Indigenous groups. Um, the European Union is actually leading in this type of regulation. And so they have a new regulation uh, called um, the European Clean Energy Package. And within that, they've got the Renewable Energy Directive and that has uh, a new um, uh, governance structure called Renewable Energy Communities. And what's really interesting about Renewable Energy Communities is that it targets a variety of renewables. It targets local uh, citizens as well as local organizations, local authorities and incumbent energy companies. And uh, the regulation seeks to have them all work together in order to produce renewable energy locally, but that can also be exported to the grid. So regulation um, and public policy play a very important role in this. And what we found uh, was that um, our recommendations based on our learning from the study is that uh, public policy from you know, federal, ter territorial and provincial government should all be focusing on um, on indigenous communities producing renewable energy. Um, final question, uh, Christina, and that is uh, most of the provinces have uh, climate plans and yeah. those that do uh, put a lot of emphasis on the electrification of the economy over time to reduce GHG emissions. And I've seen studies uh, from BC that suggest anywhere from a doubling to a tripling of power generation by 2050. Because mm -hmm. you can't, if you're gonna power everything with electricity instead of fossil fuels and, and so on, you're just gonna need a lot more of it. And it, do the EDCs and the communities uh, see that as a big opportunity uh, for them to you know, make these investments, create jobs and so on? Yes, I mean, I'm not, we didn't ask specifically about growth in the study, um, the electrification of Canada and their role. We didn't ask about that at all, but we did ask about um, the role of renewables. And yes, it's definitely seen as a source of um, wealth creation, jobs, business development. And one of the important things about economic development corporations is that they're actually a community-based um, organization and the stakeholders are the community itself. And uh, so what a, a local economic development corporation does in an indigenous community is that they also uh, focus on capacity building, skills training, um, building business opportunities. And so, um, so, they, uh, so this is how they can engage in the renewable energy economy. Christina, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate it. Thank you.